What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So for this review, I am doing another one from Outre. This is from the Perfect Hairline Collection. And this is Katya, or Katai if you wanna call her that. But I like Katya, it sounds mad fancy. So this unit, I'ma just say, spoiler alert, it's bomb. It's worth getting. If you wanted to get it, you should, because this is the best human hair dupe, like for kinky straight that I've ever had. So here's the inside of the cap. This has the faux scalp in it, so be aware. Some people like it, some people don't. It also has an elastic band. It's also got the comb in the back and the combs on the sides as well. And then it also has your adjustable straps as well. This is what the lace looks like against my skin tone without anything done to it. It is HD transparent lace as they usually have been giving us with these new units from Outre. And they do such a good job with their HD transparent lace. I can always like blend it out with them. And I really appreciate that. It also has baby hairs as well. And so now I'ma just, we are gonna try it on real quick, see what it looks like if, you know, just off the rip. See what it look like if you just cut off the lace and go, like minimal effort. Cause some people, you know, wanna see what it looks like when we do the least. So I'll try to show y'all before I start doing the most what it looks like before I do too much to it. Definitely had to take off the stock card cause I mean, you know. I'm gonna get to the string too at some point in the video, don't worry, but yeah, just not at this moment. So I'm getting a feel for the hair and y'all, it feels so real. I was really shook. Like this hair really feels like kinky straight human hair. I'm shook. I also peeped. So like the faux scalp, we already know, it can kind of give you a line of demarcation. Like you can see it right now, you can peep some of my black hair. Um, before the you get to the faux scalp. But if you have enough forehead space and you pull it forward, you don't see it anymore. I don't have enough forehead space, so I won't be doing that. You see how crazy it looks on me, how close it is to my eyebrows, that's not gonna work. But you can see that it can be done. So if you have the forehead for it, you actually don't need to take out the faux scalp. I, however, need to take out the faux scalp, so <laughs> that's not gonna work for me. But it can be done. I just peeped that so I wanted to let y'all know. So you can see all of the space you get here. You can part it any however way you want to. I was fooling around with it at first. Like I didn't know if I wanted a side part or a middle part, but I was really feeling it to the side. So I'm gonna roll with that. Uh, but you can actually part it anywhere. As you know, it's a 13 by six lace frontal. So you can part it to the left, to the right, or you can put it in the middle, however you want to do it. Now, as for this hairline, they did a really good job with the pre-plucking as far as it not being a dense hairline. However, if you were like me and you like to use little to no baby hair, you're gonna have to pluck out the front line because with the baby hairs, it looks very straight across. So at first I thought I could maybe like try to pluck it while sitting down, but I swiftly realized y'all can't see what I'm doing, so I got up. But yeah, so I plucked out the front of the hairline just to get rid of some of those baby hairs in the front because that's what's giving it a straight line. They wanna give you enough baby hairs so you can use them if you want to, or take them out if you don't want them. Seeing as I don't want too many, you just see how like after I pluck it, it starts looking more like it's just coming straight out the scalp and less wig-like. Yeah, that's the importance of plucking. That's why y'all see me plucking these all the time. And again, if you're the type of person who likes a lot of baby hair, you don't need to do all of that because you want those hairs. I am not about to do all the baby hairs. Um, so I didn't really need, you know, all of that in the front. So next, I'm taking out this faux scalp. I have done this before in a video, but you know, I'll show y'all again up close from the new setup. Do y'all like my new background? I like, I thought the shoes in the background and everything, it's just the other side of my room was really cute. Anyways, back to the wig. But, um, so I'm taking out the faux scalp and um, with that, you just wanna be very gentle. They have it sewn in with like this clear thread. So you really wanna like go slow if you've never done this. I recommend using a seam ripper cause it can get right up in there. I used to use seam rippers to take out like my weaves back in the day. It can get really precise. And you just see how I'm just like sliding it under the thread and popping them out. It'll really start to unravel on its own time so you don't have to do too much. It's really not hard. You just wanna make sure you don't cut your lace. Like this is sped up footage, so don't think you can just go this fast in real time. But yeah, just be careful so you don't wanna rip a hole, especially in the front line of your lace. But other than that, like it pretty much just it just comes out like once you start popping the threads they just start unraveling and then once all the threads are popped out i just cut along that baseline there uh, just to get the rest of the faux scalp out
All right, now that that's settled, I'm going to tint my lace using the Don't Touch My Hair spray. Y'all know I've been raving about this spray on my lace for about a good month now. Listen, this tint, especially on this outre lace, is bomb. Like, it really be getting me together. It never mixes with, like, the products I use to install my units, which is why I typically don't even use lace tints because they're a little too thick. But this one always gets me together. Like, look at it. The combo of the lace with the lace tint that I use. Like, you can't even see the lace anymore except for where you can see it near my eyebrows. Like, it already, like, matches up perfectly. I did pluck a little more once the unit was on my head because I felt like there was just some areas that weren't quite sparse enough for me. That is personal preference. It's not necessary. A lot of things that I do is just because I like to, like, get my wigs to the full slayage potential. And um, so for me, that meant breaking up the hairline a little bit more. So I went ahead and brushed out that shedding. Y'all, this hair really isn't even tangling on me. Obviously, it's going to shed because I plucked something. But outside of, you know, once I got all of the plucked hairs out of the unit, I really wasn't seeing any shedding issues. Um, the tangling, you know, obviously, you're going to have some minimal tangling. It's still synthetic wig. But it was very minimal. Like, my brush was gliding through this wig. Y'all already know the texture is kinky straight. It is dead on a human hair kinky straight wig. Like, I really can't even tell the difference. That's how good it looks. And of course, like they've been doing for a while now, they've been giving it to me with this ear to ear full coverage. Y'all know so many times, like I'm always having to blend that little piece of my corner on the sides in with my wigs. Not with the last couple units Outre has been dropping. They have been getting me all the way together, full ear to ear coverage, no hair left out. So I'm going to cut off the lace. I am cutting off the lace before I install. I will install my wigs any which type of way. So I don't really have a big preference. It really just depends on how I'm feeling that day, how I install my wigs. But I do feel like cutting the lace off first leaves you with less of a residue mess most of the time. Um, however, in my case today, it didn't quite work out like that. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Of course, I got cut around the ear. Um, I didn't really have to cut much around the ear. It was pretty contoured already around there, but you're just cutting off any excess lace that I didn't need around that area. Oh my God, y'all, like this lace is already like super blended and we ain't even put it down yet. Like there's no adhesive or nothing on this wig yet. It is already just melting. Okay, so what had happened was I, one, ran out of my regular free spray that I've been using, like the newer one, and two, the old school one that I had, I couldn't find it at the time. So I thought, let me try doubling up on two different gels. I've been using the Don't Touch My Hair Pineapple Gel. It does really smell like pineapples. And I am using my Got To Be Glued in the yellow tube because it's a little, you know, more, it's got a better hold. That, that, something about that paste just has a better hold. So I thought if I double up with those, maybe I would have less residue because the pineapple gel is clear and the um, Got To Be has the stronger hold. So I did that and eh, if I had my blow dryer going at the time, I probably could have did that a little bit better. But trying to do this like piece by piece was just not panning out the way I thought it was going to. Like I have not installed with just gel alone in so long and I don't plan on doing that again. It's just something about the fast dry dryingness of free spray that makes these installs a lot easier. I will never take that for granted again because this, like this ain't even in real time, but this took a while. And then it was like, as soon as I pushed the wig back to try to do the other section, the whole wig came up with it because it wasn't fully dry yet. Like, oh my goodness, like hairspray is necessary, y'all. <laughs> That's just my opinion, but it is. So I was just like, you know what, forget it. And I just did the whole hairline at once so I could put the whole wig down at one time too. And that actually made it easier. I wish I would have thought to do that in the first place because now I felt like I was going to end up with a little bit of like that residue kind of lightness you can get on the hairline when you have too much product on because I had to keep the wig kept popping up I had to keep trying to put it on and you know that's how you get that kind of cast when you got too much product or you keep lifting the product out of place and it's getting like sticky it's just not it's not a fun time and so it didn't turn out too bad though it was looking really good and um I then took a scarf I still have not taken that knot out of my elastic band yet but the elastic band will be back at some point probably when I take these nails off that's the problem 
But yeah, I took my scarf. I love the extra long satin scarves because you can wrap it around your head twice. I hate the ones where you just gotta wrap it in the back one time. I need to bring it back around. I need like all the security. I blow dried for a good like two, three minutes on cool just to speed up that drying process. And then I just let my scarf finish for yet another episode of Bridgerton. I still haven't finished it yet, so don't spoil it for me. I'm almost there though. And then that's when I took my scarf off and that's when I found my free spray. I had to go over it with some free spray to make sure it was secure because it's just so fast drying. Like y'all, I was so relieved to find my spray. But um, after I did that, I did want to clean up the hairline because like I was saying about the residue before, I did have some of that problem where the residue from, you know, all my issues was making the hairline a little too light. Like you can kind of see it right now. It's not too, too bad, but you can see it. But listen, the hair itself, like, yes. Like if you reinstalled it, if you mess up like I did, just take your wig off and reinstall it. I ain't had the time to do all that, so I'm just gonna disguise it, but you can just clean off your lace and do it again and you'll be just fine. So I am doing a curved side part with this unit and like, ah, I just love this wig guys. Like already, I'm just so impressed by Katya. I am going to add just a tiny bit of baby hair. Just, you really could, like if I hadn't messed up with all the gel and stuff, I could have went no baby hair just all the way but I did want to kind of disguise where it was a little bit light on the hairline so I'm adding just some very you know how I usually do just a little bit of baby hair in there and it's just I'm still like I'm still talking about it because I'm excited y'all like I'm getting pretty good with this whole baby hair thing and making it easy on myself because it, it took me a while okay baby hair especially on synthetic wigs is not the easiest to do but it's starting to come together for me. I laid the baby hair then I got to working on getting this unit set in place with my parting and also just kind of like you know trying to tame it down a little bit if you like the blowout look with this hair I like it too but for the specific look I'm going for I did want it a little more tame the wig does take heat up to 400 degrees I have my hot comb on like 10 I got this hot comb on Amazon all my Amazon links are down below if you have questions about like the tools that I use and things like that um, but yeah, and then I added some of my Fit Me powder. The color is 25. That's the number. I remembered this time. I didn't remember in the last video, but I remembered this time. But yes, the Fit Me powder that I'm using is in the number 25. And it's like a, I think it's medium brown or light brown, one or the other. But yeah, I'm using that in the parting. I love powder in the parting over liquid. I mean, liquid can work too, but something about powder is just a lot easier and less product to get the desired result. Now you can see it, but it's there. I just didn't realize it wasn't in frame, but I am using my Don't Touch My Hair mousse and I am using that to help me flatten the hair down and tame it all the way. It's just a perfect finishing touch. I like using it on my human hair and synthetic wigs. And this is how it all came together. Oh my God, y'all. This, this wig is a 10 out of 10 to me. Highly recommend. This is the back of the unit. This wig, like I said it before and I'm gonna say it again. It's a great human hair dupe for kinky straight. You can't tell me this doesn't look like human hair. Cause I mean, it, it looks like human hair. What are you gonna say? I can't remember if I mentioned it, but my color is in a 1B. I do think this is definitely big head friendly. Most outro units I would say have been really big head friendly lately. So I feel like any size can make this work for you, especially with the elastic band and adjustable straps. But anyways, if you're interested in this unit, details will be down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.